Seven Graces. The gaunt ghost fires loom as subtle shrouds, smokes and shades on the beers of Red Mountain. Arches and spires line the rock halls, dimly lit by the spirits of the dead. The blood of broken hearths and houses runs in red rivers, blossoms and fountains. Girdled round within walls of wit's glass, the shattered hosts slumber in cradles of ash. But when shall they wake? What dark crucible may kindle their souls to light? How long beneath red reeking clouds must flickering watchfires burn? How many lifetimes of labor and lament will it take to seal this restless tomb? That was an excerpt from Lord Vivek's Brooding Beneath Red Mountain. The cantatas of Vivek are gospels written in the form of epic songs. They trace the evolution of Vivek from a mortal into an enlightened divine. Vivek sought out experiences that tested him in every way possible, particularly in the defense and protection of his Dunmer people. And through his long life, his humility, and his unconquerable spirit, he attained the wisdom of the Seven Graces. Over many centuries, the Dunmer people seek the wisdom of the Seven Graces by performing a pilgrimage across the seven sites in Vardenfell. The pilgrim must visit each of the shrines of the Seven Graces, stand before the three-sided stone triolith, and read the inscription. Once done, Lord Vivek showers pilgrims with blessings that last at least a half day. Each of these seven shrines highlight the legend of Lord Vivek. The Fields of Kumu, Shrine of Humility Here Lord Vivek met a poor farmer whose gwar had died. The farmer could not harvest his muck without his gwar, and he could not provide for his family or his village. So the Lord Vivek removed his fine clothes and toiled in the fields like a beast of burden until the crop was harvested. It is at the fields of Kumu we go to pray for the same humility Lord Vivek showed on that day. To stop the moon, the shrine of daring. When Sheogorath rebelled against the tribunal, he tricked the moon bar Dao into forsaking its appointed path through oblivion. The mad star inspired the moon to hurl itself upon Vivek's new city, which Sheogorath claimed was built in mockery of the heavens. When Vivek learned of Sheogorath's scheme, he froze the rogue moon in the sky with a single gesture and the grace of his countenance. Overwhelmed by the courage and daring of Vivek, the moon bar Dao swore itself to eternal service of the tribunal and all its works. Thus, the moon now stands guard over the palace and serves as a citadel for the temple's ordinators. The Palace, Shrine of Generosity Long after Lord Nerevar and the tribunal triumphed over Dagoth Ur, the people wished to build a monument to the heroes of that war. Vivek thanked them, but said that it would be better to dedicate a monument not only to the glorious heroes, but to all people, great and small, who suffered and died in the war. It became the custom to make offerings here, either in thanks to our good fortune, or for those less fortunate. The Puzzle Canal, the Shrine of Courtesy. In a battle with Merun's Dagon, Vivek gave his own silver longsword to the Daedra Lord, rather than dishonor himself by fighting an unarmed foe. This so impressed the Dramora, that they now share a bond of respect and courtesy with the followers of the Tribunal though we must never forget that they are our enemies. The Mask of Vivek, Shrine of Justice In the days of fire when Dagoth Ur first crept back into Red Mountain and awakened it, Vivek led refugees to Gnesis as they fled the ash and blight. Weary, they rested here for a while. When Vivek awoke, he found himself and all his followers encased in casts of grey ash. Frozen like a sleeping statue and unable to free himself or help his people, Vivek was filled with despair. Vivek's tears weakened his ash cast. He tore the ash from his perished followers, breathed life into their lungs, and cured them of the blight. This is Vivek's heroism. His tender heart provides strength when his might fails. Coal Cave, the Shrine of Valor Within the Coal Cave, Vivek fought a battle with Ruddy Man, the father of the Dra. When he defeated Ruddy Man, Vivek spared his life on the condition that Ruddy Man and his children would give up their tough hides to serve as armor for the Dunmer. The Ghost Fence, the Shrine of Pride. The Ghost Fence is a lasting symbol of the indomitable will and power of Almsivi, and a monument to Dunmer pride in overcoming its enemies. These are the epic stories of Lord Vivek illustrating his humility, daring, generosity, courtesy, justice, valor, and pride.
the pilgrimages of the seven graces is definitely one of the great quests in Morrowind. Every time you visit a shrine, there is a backstory about what happened there and why the shrine was erected. It's a great example of how you know a lore can be integrated into a quest. Essentially, it tells you about the legend of Lord Vivek at every shrine. So, one of the great quests in Morrowind, according to me, it has a rich backstory and uh, it's uh, it's great exploration, right? And this poem was very interesting to me, Kantantas of Vivek. It's a fascinating poem. The words seem to be dramatic and filled with lament and worry. If you look, it's a poem about the difficulty in actually defeating Degothor and his search for an answer. At the start, he talks about uh, the blood of broken hearts and houses, and essentially, he's talking about the war between Vember and the Chimer in the first era. And then he talks about the shattered host slumbers and cradles of ash. Uh, this looks like he's referring to the future awakening of Dagothor. But uh, this actually happens in the second era, in 2E8A2, when Dagothor reawakens along with his ash vampires. And the last para, he talks about how many lifetimes of labor and lament will it take to seal this restless tomb. This restless tomb, I think, he's referring to Dagothor. Uh, it's a reference to Dagothor's unwillingness to die. His periodic returns tantamount to the restless tomb. Sealing the tomb would mean permanently killing Dagothor, something that's beyond the ability of Tribunal because their power is drawn with, from the same source as Dagothor's. Both Dagothor and, Tribun and the Tribunal get their power from the Kagranak tools, right? From the heart of Lokran. So yeah, these words are dramatic, they're filled with lament, and ultimately we all know what will happen when we play Morrowind. There are references to the Seven Graces in the Second Era. So if you look at uh, the Pilgrim's Path in Iso, they have... Uh, this, these graces everywhere, Fields of Kumu, how they looked at that time, in the second era. Pretty nice. These look very good, really good. 